Hi, everyone, and welcome to Kitty Nomics. I'm Stacy, and I'm her daughter Mickey. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining today on uh, Kitty Nomics. We are super duper excited for our special guest today. Hey! We are gonna be talking about budgeting and, and what that means for small kids. Um, so we are happy about that because you need to learn budgeting, right? Well, I kind of do know what budgeting means. If you don't know what it means, I can explain it. <laughs> All right, so Miss April is gonna explain it to us. But first, some housekeeping items that we'd like to start with. First, we'd like to thank all of the first responders out there through this tremendous time that we're going through, this unprecedented time. We'd like to thank all the doctors, the nurses, all of the frontline staff in the hospitals, the janitors, the teachers out there for keeping our kids learning through this time, police officers. And everybody who has to go through and to sacrifice yourself and to make sure that we don't get sick. Yes, so thank you for keeping us healthy and safe through this time. All the delivery men and women for still keeping our, our stuff coming to our doors and our grocery store clerks. Thank you to just everybody. Um, so we just like to start off with what Kittynomics is all about. Kittynomics is our YouTube channel for financial literacy for kids. It's developed, developed for kids ages eight plus um, just to help kids learn financial literacy skills to help them start on the right path towards a successful financial future, right? So we just feel if kids can learn ABCs and one, two, threes, they should be learning financial literacy so that they grow into adults that are way more financially literate. And so we can create tiny financial literacy ambassadors across the globe. So thank you everybody and all the parents that have their kids joining right now. We are super duper excited, thank you. So let's get into who we have today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have Miss April Mullings. She's a finance and tax specialist, a graduate of the University of Toronto. April has worked in the accounting field for over 18 years, right? That's kind of like in high school. That's older. <laughs> That's <laughs> older than you. Uh, she holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree with a specialist in management and economics. As a finance professional, she has advised clients across various industries on the implementation of accounting systems and processes, enabling them to be more effectively met to enabling them to more effectively manage their operations and professional, or sorry, and personal finances. Her range of services include consultation in the business startup phase, ongoing financial reporting, and management payroll, administration, sales, tax reporting, personal and corporate tax return preparation. Among her greatest joys is seeing her clients effectively use their financial information to make more, in, to make informed and smart choices. April is also a mom and a strong advocate for early financial mm. literacy. So we'd like to give a round of applause and kitty nom nomics welcome to Ms. April Mullings. Over to you, April. All right, so I'm going to Stop sharing my screen here. Yeah. There you go. Hi, everyone. I am so excited. So as Miss Stacy said, my name is April Mullings, and you may call me Miss April. And I'm really excited to talk to you today. I'm glad that you took the morning to spend with me because I get to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is money. 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 <laughs> Sorry, a second, April. We forgot one last thing. Uh, boys and girls, if you could just get out a pencil and paper uh, to just keep going with our, our budgeting, because we're going to do some exercises, and we forgot to mention that in the very beginning. So just get out a pencil and paper so that you can follow along with Miss April today. Absolutely. So grab your pen, grab your paper. What I also want you to do is to participate, because we can learn together. If you have any good ideas for some of the questions that I may ask, you can drop those in the chat so that way we can have a discussion together. And one other thing, no question is a silly question. We're all here to learn. So if you have a question, don't be shy. 
put it in the chat and Miss Stacy will pass your questions on to me and I can answer them for you very, very nicely. All right, so why is money one of my favorite topics? A lot of people love money because money gives us power. It gives us power to go on fun trips. It gives us power when we go to the store and we want to buy something fun, right, Mickey? Yeah. Yeah. It money is power, but we have to be smart about how we use this money. So using a budget is one of the ways that we can be smart about using our money. Now you might say, what is a budget? I'm too young to understand. I have no idea what a budget is. Well, I'm going to break it down for you. It's, it's not that hard, actually. A budget is just a plan. So just like how sometimes you say to your friends, let's plan to go to the park at this time, or let's plan to ride our bikes at this time, that's what a budget is. A budget helps you to plan. So I'm gonna write that here for you. It is a plan. And this plan allows us to to create a roadmap for how we are going to spend our money. All right, now some grown-ups, if you ask your mom and ask your dad, some of them don't like that word budget because they see it as being restrictive. They think that someone's gonna tell them you can't spend your money and they feel like their power is being taken away. But we never, we never let anybody take our power away, right? We own our power. So in creating a budget, we are owning our power over our money. And we are creating a plan for how we are going to spend our money. Spend our money. So you know what I prefer to call a budget? I prefer to call it a spending plan. And that makes you feel so much more empowered about how you spend your money. So you can write this down on your paper, a spending plan. Spending plan. Whoops, there we go, spending plan. All right, so when you finish with your chat, you talk to your parents and you say, mom, can we do a spending plan? And this will be a good habit for you to develop as you get older. All right, so why is the budget important? You don't ever want to go to the store to buy something and you go to the store with $2 and you get there and you figure out that the thing costs you $3 and you don't have enough money. This is why we plan. So why is a budget important? It's important because you get to plan how you spend your money so that you don't run out of money. And that way you have money to get the things that first of all you need, and then you get some more money or you can have some money left over to get some of the things that you want. All right? And you have to remember that needs and wants. We'll talk about that just a little bit more. So why is a budget important? Mickey, why is a budget important? The budget is important because it's basically like a power so you basically have our things. And awesome. we're, that we're always ha uh, having like a plan. Yes. Yeah. And so that you have enough money. You don't want to run out of money. All right. One of, so, our, one of our attendees has asked, is that like a piggy bank? Yes, you can keep your money in a piggy bank. Actually, look what I have right here. Oh. I have that tree It's an elephant piggy bank. This one's an elephant, but it's still a bank. It's an Ellie bank. It's my son's. And he's yeah. going to watch this video and wonder, Mommy, what are you doing with my elephant? But we talk about feeding his elephant. So yes, you can save your money in an elephant or a piggy bank or whatever your piggy bank looks like. I have, oh. I have two piggy banks. One yes, is big. with a lot of like, money in it. And then it's just like a tiny little cute pig, um, uh, piggy bank. 
and then after one is big, but it's big. Ah, and you use your piggy banks for different things, don't you? I barely, I barely, I, I barely like use the money that's in there because like I. <laughs> that's her favorite. <laughs> but I'm sure Miss April's gonna get to that. All right. So, what is the first step in creating a budget? The first thing is you need some money, right? And you might think, oh, I'm too young. I don't have a job. I don't have any money. But sometimes. You, there may be things that you have that's income and you might not know that it's income. What are some of the things that you could have that are income? And if you have any ideas, throw them in the chat, all right? Some of you may have income through your allowance. Mom or dad may give you an allowance every week, maybe every two weeks, maybe every month. That is your income and you can do a budget for how you spend your money. Other sources of income uh, may be if you do chores around the house and, and if you get paid for those chores. Ooh, I like that one, Emmanuel. When you get gifts, yes, those are the best kinds of income. When you get that birthday money or you get money at Christmas, you know what's even a good source of income? You know when the tooth fairy leaves some cash for you for that missing tooth under your pillow? That's also income, right? So man, that tooth fairy gives a lot of money, I feel. <laughs> that, these, these new age tooth fairies are giving out so much money, it's making it hard for a mama. Yes, <laughs> but I, for five dollars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, someone said when you sell your old toys. I love that one. And I know in the chat, there are some of you who have little businesses. Maybe you help your neighbors to shovel the snow. Maybe in the summertime, you set up a lemonade stand and you sell lemonade or maybe you sell cookies or maybe you're out there in, in show business like my nephew who I'm so proud of who's working in commercials and TV. He's making money. So even as children, you can all have and record your source of income. So I'm just gonna write down what some of these sources of income are that we talked about. So we talked about allowance. We talked about gifts, chores, and so much more. Ooh, someone said I got lots of money from the tooth fairy. <laughs> I love it. All right, so, so that's income. So in order to build a budget, we start with how much money we get in. So income is money that comes in money in right this is what income is money in now expenses are the opposite of income so what do you think expenses are mickey i think expenses um are like something expensive and you like things that you buy it, yeah. it sounds like it doesn't it they they have part of the same word and expense is the opposite of money in it's money that goes out so let's write money out right that's what an expense is so when you go to the store if you buy something that money that you spend on that thing is now an expense and we know we love to spend money at the store we love to buy lots of things a lot of you love to buy video games or you like to buy chips or you know when you go to the grocery store with mommy and can i have that can i ha those are all expenses so now we know what expenses are expenses are money that go out. Meanwhile, income is money that comes in. So when you're building your budget, the first thing you do is how much is the money in? How much is the money that goes out? And some of our examples that we spend expenses that are expenses are, let's say, chips or video games.
or when we used to be able to go outside and go to the sport oh, toys that's a good one aria toys right so those are all good examples of expenses so what we're going to do now now that you know what income is and you know what expenses are are you ready to do a budget with me we're actually going to do a budget together all right so let me just shift this down and we are going to do a budget together yes video games are very expensive expensive <laughs> all right so first we have to start with our income so I uh, like money. We're going to say, we're going to pretend that we have income of $20. Now I know we may have some people tuning in and they may be saying my $20 doesn't look like that. Uh, but if you're from another country where your $20 doesn't look like this, it's okay. $20 is $20. So we're going to pretend that our income is $20 and we're going to build a budget based on that. So right up here, we are going to write our income is $20, right? And make sure you're writing that down on your paper as well. Now, remember earlier when we talked about the piggy bank, this little guy here, <laughs> one of the first things I say to people when they make their money is that they have to pay themselves first. And by that, I mean you need to save. Because when you save, you're building up money. Every time you feed your elephant, every time you feed your piggy bank, you're saving money for some time down the road. So maybe one day you might want to go to college or you might want to go to university. When you tuck that money away in your piggy bank, that's your way of saving for yourself for down the road. So I always say, save some of your money. So in this case, I think I want to save $2, right? For those of you who are a little bit older and maybe you learned about percentages at school, that is 10% of $20. So $2 is a nice amount for you to save. So I'm going to write savings right here. $2. And I'm going to put a minus beside it because remember, income is money that comes in. Expenses are money that go out. So whenever money goes out, we're going to put a minus beside it. So we know that, oh man, this money just went. Even though that savings just went to you. You didn't give it to a store. You gave it to yourself because you're paying yourself first. Awesome. So then the next thing I want to talk about are what are called fixed expenses. So this one's a little bit of a, a fancy term, at, but I want you to impress your parents. So what is a fixed expense? A fixed expense is that expense that you just cannot get rid of. Every week you have to pay it, every month you have to pay it, and the amount typically doesn't change. So have you ever heard mom or dad talk about, talk about having to pay the mortgage or pay the rent. That's an example. Yes, like bills. Yes. Someone said bills. Kudos. Those are examples of fixed expenses because they come in every month and we have to pay them every month. And usually those fixed expenses fall under the category of needs. You have to have a roof over your head. You have to have heat in your house so that you can stay warm you have to have electricity so that you can log on to zoom and have a chat with me so utilities if you ever hear your parents say that those are examples of fixed expenses so you might not have a mortgage to pay you might not have rent to pay but what about if you had to pay mom and dad for your room think about that right that room that sometimes you don't want to keep clean so um, let's <laughs> so let's pretend that you have to pay mom or dad for your room. That is an example of a fixed expense. So rooms are cheap. We're going to pay mom and dad $6 for that room that you sleep in every night. Right? Yeah, six bucks. I want six bucks a night. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Someone said, what? This, no one sleeps for free. Mom and dad have to pay for the house, and so now you have to pay for your room. Six dollars for that room. <laughs> now, when mom and dad chauffeur drives you around and brings you to soccer games and basketball games and all of that stuff, they have a car that sometimes they have to make car payments on. That's a fixed expense too. So guess what? If you have a bicycle or a scooter, now you have a fixed expense. I'm going to put down $2 for that bicycle. You need to pay mom and dad $2 for your bicycle or your scooter. All right? <laughs> because you need to get around as well. I don't have any dollars. We have the $20. You have $20. Yes. We started with $20. So now we have that fixed expense of a bicycle. And you want access to your internet, so you need some electricity and you want to stay warm in your house, right? You don't want to be in your house in your, in your jacket and your coat all the time to keep warm. So now you have to chip in too. You have to chip in $2 for utilities, all right? And utilities, that's gas, that's water that we need to wash our hands so that we can keep safe. So right here, we're going to put in what we call utilities. And that's another two bucks that we're throwing in. So right here, our fixed expenses come up to $10. And these are our needs. Do you see that we haven't even gotten to our wants yet? Right? So look at that. We had $20. We just spent two, so now we're down to $18. We just spent 10, so now we're down to, what's that? 18 minus 10, now we're down to only $8. Oh my gosh. So then we get into what I call variable expenses. And variable expenses are expenses that change every time or every month, every week. We don't always have to spend our money on these things. So some of these things are the fun things like toys or video games or that chips from the store or if we, she said, what are we going to be left with nothing? This is why we budget so that you're not left with anything and you can choose where we spend our money. All right, so let's get to some variable expenses. Some of the variable expenses. Some of the kids are, 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 are fretting about all of their money going away. <laughs> They have no money left. It's oh, real life. It's real life. So now we have to choose. What are we going to spend our money on? You know what's actually also a variable expense, but mom and dad do it. They spend their money on it because they want to see you do well. And sometimes it's good exercise or you're learning a new skill. Hobbies. Very expensive. Going to swimming lessons isn't, isn't a must. Going to soccer practice isn't a must. Mom and dad work hard, and that's actually a variable expense. So you have to think about it. Mm, do I want to go to piano lessons, or do I want those chips, right? Sometimes we have to decide. So a good variable expense, and this is a good one to spend your money on, are hobbies, right? So let's do hobbies. Some of us like basketball. Some like soccer. So let's say we're gonna spend two dollars on our favorite hobby all right two dollars i saw lots of suggestions for toys or video games so then you have to choose okay how much am i going to spend on my video game so that i don't run out of money maybe we can spend another two dollars on toys sounds good yeah toys or video games. So that's $2 there. Oh my gosh. So we were at 20 minus 2, that's 18. Minus 10, that's 8. Minus 2, that's 6. Minus 2, that's 4. Oh my gosh, we only have $4 left. What are we going to spend it on? What? So this is where we have to choose. But if we didn't write out this budget, we wouldn't know how much money we have left, right? So this is why budgeting is important. So, you know, one thing that I love to, and <laughs> Emmanuel is not spending any more money. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm like you, Emmanuel. <laughs> no more spending. <laughs> okay. You know what I always encourage children to spend some money on? It makes you a good citizen. And what that means is you're a good person. You help people. Sometimes we can spend money on charity. So if you see someone on the street who may be down on their luck, sometimes maybe you could give them some of your change. Or if you go to church and maybe you bring an offering to church, I always say that it's a good idea to give some of your money to charity. Now, I know that may be hard to do when you feel like you have no money left, but because I want to encourage you to be good human beings who think about other people, I am going to put down charity as one of our variable expenses. Are you okay with that for today? I know you're good people, so you're okay with it. All right. So charity. And we have space for two more dollars. What are we spending it on? Well. Well. Uh, let's yeah. see what the kids online say. What do you say, Nikki? Uh, I was going to say sports. You already got sports. You got hobbies. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What Elias says it? keep it. I love it. <laughs> but I'm giving you permission to spend it this time. Save it. Oh, Peyton says save it. Ooh. Candy. I was oh, gonna say that candy. candy, candy, candy. Okay, so since we already, I like the save idea actually. So kudos to all of you who said save it. Since we saved up here, I will let us spend it on candy. All right. So here we have candy. Cotton candy. Minus two. So all of your variable expenses came up to eight dollars money's done we don't get to spend any more money until we make more income money. right <laughs> we don't get to spend any more money that's just the bottom line so when mom goes to the store and you're saying mom can i have this mom can i have that she doesn't have any more money the budget's done Peyton says, now we're broke. That's right. Now you're broke no, until we make some more money. And we make more money by working hard. Maybe you could convince mom or dad to, to, to give you some chores that may pay some money. Or maybe that's when you start a little business and figure out a way to make mo more money. But now you see how your budget helps you to figure out how you spend your money. And the one last thing that I want to talk about is, you notice on this side, I say budget. On that side, I have actuals. Because it's one thing to create your budget, but as you're spending your money, you need to keep track of it. And the best way to do that is to write it down. So you write down your income that you get every time. You write down how much you put on your savings. Let's say you went to the store and you got too excited and you spent $3 on candy. You spent a dollar too much. So now you're gonna have to take that dollar from somewhere else, all right? So keeping track of how much you spend, this is an important column. So when we're finished this chat, I want you to practice good budgeting and practice keeping track of your money that you spend. Every time you spend a dollar, when you go to the store, you come back, you get a little book like mine, and you write down on your actual side how much money you actually spent. And that way, you won't run out of money. Sounds good? Yeah, and one of them said, I don't want to be broke. <laughs> I don't want to be broke either. And guess what? I don't want you to be broke because you're too powerful to be broke and you're too smart to be broke. All right. So if anyone has any questions, I'm all ears. So one of the questions, oh, well, thank you, Miss April. That was amazing. The breakdown of the budget was phenomenal. And I think that everybody got to see when parents um, are telling our kids that, you know, that's not within our budget right now, that you can see how it actually breaks down with things that you really need versus your want. So I, this was absolutely phenomenal. One of the questions, um, one of the questions that I did see was, how do we save our money, which was a really good one. 
So I'm just going to say we are going to have another uh, Kittynomics session about savings and all the different types of facilities that we can use to save. So look out for that Kittynomics one and we're going to answer all of those types of questions in that Kittynomics one. So let's just get to some of the chat here and um, can you please explain the actual column again, please? Okay. So let's say you got $20 in for the month. So this is, this is what you create before you actually spend your money. So then the week comes and you got your money, dad gives you your allowance. So you go and you write your $20 in the actuals column because you actually got your $20. And then, you know, you're in good habits of saving. So that, that week, you're going to take your toonie, you're going to drop it in your piggy bank, and then you're going to go to your book and you're going to write $2. Then you're going to go to mom and dad and say, okay, mom, here's your $6. If mom gives you a break on rent that month, let's say, let's say she says, okay, you know what? You did really, really well at your online learning this week. So you only have to pay me $5 for rent. So your actuals that month, that week, might only be $5. So that's where you get to compare what did you plan to spend versus what you really spent. What about babysitting? Yeah, so if you're making money through babysitting, let's say you got $20 from mom and dad, but you earned another $10 babysitting. So guess what? Now your actual earning is $30. And that way you can see how much more money you have to spend. So recording your actuals allows, we're not going to be broke. No, you're not, Amelia. <laughs> recording your actuals is recording the actual activity that you do after you've made your plan. And if for some reason you manage to save more money, which a lot of people do when they create a budget, then you could take that extra money and save it. Or sometimes I let my son treat himself too. <laughs> <laughs> One of the parents online says, this is a wake up call for my children on the sacrifices we the parents make for all of their things. Yes. So, I because, think because we know. phenomenal. Yeah, and Miss Stacy, we know that swimming lessons does not cost $2, right? No, no. <laughs> no, especially when you have multiple activities, right? Like you have tennis and you have basketball. <laughs> yeah. And tutoring. Tutoring for your kids is also a, a good one to put on there for um, expenses. And babysitting Leia. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and for the parents who may be tuned in and watching, go through the exercise of actually building the family budget with your children. They'll learn to respect your money more. So when you've enrolled them in soccer and they decide at week four of seven that they're over it, they'll see that you spend good money of the family budget on soccer. So we need to finish those three weeks, right? One of our Kittynomics kids says, I kind of now understand why my mom says money does not grow on trees. No, it I does mean, not. Mom, That's mom right. means money. No, wait. Mom means no made of money. Oh, that's what mom means. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's who. That's a that's a new acronym <laughs> I've never heard of. <laughs> you know, we learn something new every day. This every season. single day. Uh, so, is there any more questions on the chat? Anybody? Hey, uh, scroll down so you can see. Oh yeah. No. Nope. Down. Okay. All right, just because we don't want to keep everybody too long, we try to keep this at a 40 minute time frame. So this has been absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, Miss April. Thank you, Thank you so much. One of our team says this was fun. Um, I loved what you shared with us, Miss April. That was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you from all of our kids on the chat box. So I am just going to um, finish up, guys, okay? And Ms. April will still be on the line, so we will just finish up shortly. So one of our last questions that we love to ask on every Kittynomics session is, what would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer to this question is, real change that impacts the world. Because 
if you guys are more financially literate, you will grow from kids to adults that are financially literate. And with that, you will make better choices and educated choices and educated decisions that will positively affect your life. And that's what we want. We want you guys to have a great foundation because without a great foundation, things crumble. So we want you guys to start out with a great foundation in life so that you can build whatever it is that you're gonna build in the most educated way possible. So we just like you guys to know that um, we have, Kittynomics is a weekly Friday session. So our past weeks, we've had uh, stocks for kids, we've had mortgages for kids, we've had real estate for kids. So you can check that out on our YouTube channel. And now we've started this mini series with Miss April. So today was about budgeting. Next week is about assets and liabilities. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting because I didn't even know what that means. <laughs> yes, right? So that's gonna be super fun, especially talking about those needs and wants. So that's gonna be fun. And then our following week, which is Friday, June 12th, will be taxes. And taxes is a big one. <laughs> taxes is a big one. So we, so we hope you guys can join us and keep tuned every single week for Kittynomics. We are here every Friday at 11 a.m. So if you guys could tell a friend to tell a friend, that would be phenomenal. So we're just going to wrap up. Um, Make sure. Talk to us and just let us know what other ideas that you guys would like to hear um, uh, on Kittynomics. So after April sessions, we will be getting into credit. So credit is a really important one. So we're going to follow that up with a, a series about credit. Um, but please let us know what else you guys in our chat box. Um, just let us know what else you guys would like to hear about because that would be absolutely phenomenal. Okay. And then you can, if you guys can, you can watch us and subscribe. Subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the notification bell down below. And comment, you know, what's your favorite video? Like, what's your favorite video of what we've been making? Yes. What do you like favorite, like, uh, like, like what is it that you guys yeah. would like to see? So you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Please like our channels just because the more people that we, that like, and we can share this information out there, we yeah. can create more tiny financial literacy ambassadors around the world that will positively affect your family, your friends, and your surrounding communities around you. And so if you guys have any questions or follow-up questions, you can use the hashtag ask, um, ask Kittynomics Kitty or hashtag Kittynomics. And whatever the question is, we'll ask one of our um, experts that has been on Kittynomics to help answer that question. And the last thing I would like to say, I got a really great email um, a day or two ago from one of our Kittynomics parents just saying, wow, what you're doing is super amazing for the kids. And I would just like to say, you know what? This is really brought to you by us and our Kittynomics experts. Our experts have been phenomenal sharing this information with you guys, just trying to get all the kids out there educated on financial literacy. So we would just like to say a big thank you to thank all of our experts that join us on Kittynomics and week after week. We are super happy to have you guys on, right? Yeah, and without all of you guys, and without all of these expert, um, experts. <laughs> experts, yeah, we wouldn't be able to show, like, do all these videos. And so thank you so much. We just want to so God much. bless you guys because we're so happy that you are blessed in this world. Thank you so much, guys. And if you guys have any questions, you can also email us. But that's it for Kittynomics for this Friday. Please join us for next week's Friday on Assets and Liabilities with Miss April Mullings. But thank you, everybody. Thank you, April, for this week's session. It was absolutely phenomenal. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.